Let's take a look at animating this chain of monkeys. What I'm going to do is instead of animating these objects, I'm actually going to animate a lower res object and have that drive this object. But I'm, I want the objects to remain rigid. Okay, so it's just four little monkeys. Okay, and they're connected at the at the wrist. This is all one layer. So I'm going to go over to layer two, put layer one in the background. And I'm going to go ahead and create my low res object. So I'm going to use a box and just a flat plane. And then what I'm going to do is with the knife tool, which is Shift K, I'm going to knife a segment at each wrist. Okay, just like that. Then I'm going to grab these points and delete them. Okay, so I, I'm left with a, a simple two-point polychain. I'm going to grab this point, come over to S for selection set, new, call this fix, create. Okay, and now I have everything I need to animate with. So I'm going to send this over to layout. With this in layout, let's go to texture mode. Okay, my uh, my bounding box threshold is set kind of low, so I'm going to fix that, and that's as simple as going over to D for display options and increasing my bounding box threshold, and then that way when I go to move and rotate, it doesn't go to a bounding box. That's actually a good thing uh, if you're working on a, a slower machine. Now, I've noticed that I don't like where the two-point polychain is lining up in the side view. So I'm actually going to go back to, to Modeler. And in the side view, I'm just going to line it up there. Okay. I just want it around the wrist. That's that's an important thing for me. So synchronize. Come back over here. Now, like I said, I'm going to animate the low res version of the object and uh, and then have that drive the high poly monkeys that we have here. So I'm going to come over to say frame 10 and move my two point poly chain then come over to frame 30, move it again, frame 40, move it again, and then maybe at frame 60, end up where I started. I'm going to add another 90 frames to the animation. So it's just a little circle. The two-point poly chain just does a little, just does a little loop around. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use cloth dynamics to animate this two-point poly chain. So P for properties. I'm going to bring this over here. Dynamics, add dynamics, cloth. Let's um, use that selection set to fix that top point. And let's go over to the etc tab and add some gravity. So I'm going to add negative 9.8 and give it some, I'm going to give it a preset, cotton thick. And then I'm going to just do a calculation and see what that looks like. Okay. Um, the the two-point poly chain goes pretty crazy, which is fine, but I'm going to just adjust some of my settings. I'm going to turn down compressed stretch, stress and stretch limit. Come over to the basic tab and I'm going to just give it a weight of one and see what that looks like. Okay, that's much better. If we look, instead of it flying up so high, it goes up a little bit and that works for me. Okay, and I'm actually going to give it some more gravity just to see what it looks like. Okay, and I'm going to give it even more gravity. Just playing with the, the settings a little bit. I like that even better. Okay, but I'm going to give it even more gravity. Real world gravity is negative 9.8, but we're not in the real world. We can we can adjust these settings. So I'm liking the way um, that two-point poly chain is looking. And I'm going to use that to drive the monkey animation. So to do that, I need to select the monkeys. And M for motion options. I need to parent them 
to the two-point polychain, go back to the properties panel, go over to deform, add displacement, and I'm going to use effects hard link, and now the monkeys are animated. Now, if I used, I'm just going to turn that off for a second and use metal link. If I use that, the monkeys, you can see, they're being deformed. It's uh, they become soft bodied, uh, but with with hard link, it stays ri the the objects stay rigid. But as you can see, they're moving around independent of each other. Even though it's one layer, which means it's one object. What it does is it looks at the contiguous geometry. So it knows, even though, let's uh, zoom in here, even though the points on this wrist and the points on, uh, the, you know, the points on this monkey's wrist and the points on this monkey's wrist are, um, are right next to each other, it knows that they belong to this contiguous mesh and the points on this wrist belong to this contiguous mesh. That's how it knows to treat each object that's in that layer as a separate object. So each contiguous mesh as a separate object. So it's just using the four the four two-point polys and for each two-point poly it's grabbing an object. It's grabbing that contiguous mesh. So that's just a quick look at hard link. Uh, you can use soft dynamics or cloth dynamics to drive the the mesh and then link it link the high-res object with effects hard link found under the deform tab.